In this lecture, we will consider a few examples concerning the following statement that has been discussed in lecture 5.4 let v have a dimension equals to n, so via vector space. Then n linearly independent vectors are generators of V. We will discuss a, a geometric interpretation of this result. In the particular case, V will be R3, which I remind you is the triple Cartesian product of R by itself. So the first example will concern the following choice of three linearly independent vectors. So dimension of V in this case equals to three. Why is, is this true? Well, one directly shows that the following three vectors, E1 equals one, zero, zero, E2 equals 0, 1, 0, and E3 equals 0, 0, 1. So these three vectors are both linearly independent and generators. So these three vectors are a basis of our three. And one, show, one shows this directly. From this, one concludes the dimension of V is 3, and we know that any other basis of R3 will have three elements. So this is a particular basis, and it is called canonical basis. Of R3. Now let's forget for a moment that we know that this is a basis, these are linearly independent vectors. The, the, the theorem here, the result, although we can directly prove it, but the result would imply that for every vector v in R3, there exists a unique linear combination of these EIs expressing V. So V equals to K1 times E1 plus K2 times E2 plus K3 times E3. Now we, let's see what geometrically these KIs uh, mean in the particular case of the choice of these bases, E1, E2, and E3. So we have, we have drawn a vector V in a three-dimensional coordinate system. The vectors E1, E2, E3 have precisely uh, this uh, representation uh, remember that E1 is 1, 0, 0, therefore the first coordinate, which is normally called the x-coordinate, is 1, and all the other two are 0, therefore uh, it, 
corresponds to this point, E2 will correspond to this point, and E3 to this point. Now, let's see what amounts to finding uh, and representing V as a linear combination of these vectors multiplied by certain coefficients geometrically. Okay, so we get a vector on the that will be represented by a point of an x-axis taking the projection of V to the x-axis through uh, the intersection of a plane parallel to the yz axis and translating it up to the V vector. We will need Vx to construct our linear combination of the Eis representing V. Now we do the same for all the other axes and using the appropriate coordinate planes. So now we got the Vy and here is the Vz. Now you see P, the vector P, that is an auxiliary vector, is defined to be Vx plus Vy. Okay. So by the uh, geometrical representation of the sum of vectors, we see that it is constructed precisely as the vertex of a parallelogram generated by the the lines passing from the origin to Vx and the origin to Vy. Now we will see that geometrically what amounts to saying that V equals to the vector P plus Vz. So we will show geometrically that this is the case. In this, if this is true then V can be represented as the triple sum of Vx plus Vy plus Vz simply expressing P by its definition. Okay, so we have P and Vz and we apply the parallelogram construction and we will recover V as a sum of these two vectors. So this is the being explicitly described V as the sum of P and Vz as claimed here. Now we represent every Vx, Vy and Vz as a multiple of the canonical vectors of the canonical basis. So Vx lies on the x-axis, therefore it will be a multiple of the vector E1 and we will call this multiple K1. Okay. So Vx will be K1, K1 times E1 for certain K1. Then Vy, Vy that is here, since it lies on the y-axis, will be a multiple of E2 and the coefficient of E2 to be multiplied in order to get the v, Vy, we will call K2. And the same thing for Vz. Vz is a multiple of E3, therefore it will be some K3 times E3. So now we have seen that V is represented as a linear combination of E1, E2, and E3 with coefficients K1, K2, K3. Coefficients K1, K2, K3, which are the 
the coefficients of the linear combination, the unique linear combination representing v in function of eis, are precisely the coefficient which express the projections of v on the coordinate axis as multiple of the vectors of the canonical basis. Now we have highlighted with the green color the the sum of the three vectors in the same order as they are written here. So we have k1 e1 first, therefore we are looking at this vector, this point, and to this we will sum k2 uh, times e2, which means moving from vx to p, we will be getting t p after the first two summons, and then we multiply we will add to p the vz which is k3 times e3 and therefore we'll move from p to v so this path represents this triple sum expressing the linear combination of v in function of the other vectors any other path of length 2 or length 3 sorry connecting the origin to v will correspond to a permutation of these summons. So we are in a vector space, therefore the sum is commutative. Hence, uh, V equals to also K2 E2 plus K1 E1 plus K3 E3. So in that case, we should have moved first from the origin to Vx. So this is going to be the first summon. And then the second summon is k1 e1, so we would have moved to p again, but following the other path, and then going up again with the k3 e3. Or else any other permutation of these three summons correspond to a path of length 3 connecting the origin to v.